All right, uh, Maggie, congratulations on your state championship uh, win at Braintree High. Can you take us back to that moment and describe the emotions you felt? Yeah, I think it was really special because it was my senior year, so it was my last year playing with all the kids that I've played with since I was in like first and second grade. So I think it was really special to kind of have that bond with everyone and continue up until that point where all of our hard work has paid off and especially coming off a loss the year prior, my junior year, in the state championship to the same team. So wow. it was pretty sweet um, seeing all the confetti and hearing the song and everything. So it was, it was good. That was very was really sweet. Which, which team was that? What it was Springfield was Central. Springfield Central. Yeah. So I'm sure they had a pretty good squad too. Yeah, they were really good. They were really, really good. That's really great to get that revenge yeah. and, and, and ride off in the sunset yeah. as a singer for sure. Um, how did your experience at Braintree High prepare you for the next level at Bridgewater State? I think it was really lucky because I coached, well, I was coached by um, Kristen McDonald in Braintree um, who played at Stonehill and was extremely successful at Stonehill. So she knew what it took for someone to go to that next level. Sure. So all of our practices in high school were designed to be a college, college practice and it was two hours, sometimes two and a half hours and it was a grind. She didn't take it easy, um, which is what I needed at that point to kind of propel myself to the next level and it was a pretty easy transition basketball wise um because it was like i just picked up where i left off in high school no definitely that's a great approach where she's already preparing you for the level you're going to go to next exactly. so that's a great coach exactly. for sure um what were some of the biggest challenges you faced transitioning from high school to college i think the biggest transition is kind of having that self-motivation instead of having like you know I always had like my parents to back me up but when I was at college I was kind of just myself and I kind of had to find that self-motivation within within me to get up go to class because it's a it's very easy not to go to class at college um you know kind of figure out organizationally how to manage school and basketball and then kind of take it as how do I incorporate basketball with my education? Cause I was going to college just for education. Like every school I looked for, like was what I had for my education. And then basketball was kind of just an added perk. Yeah. So I was there to get my education and then basketball kind of had to find a place within that, so. Definitely. Um, you, um, you had an incredible career at Bridgewater State University. What do you attribute your success? Too. Uh, my teammates. I had yeah. the best teammates in the entire world. Um, we clicked. We all clicked instantly. Um, and I definitely wouldn't have been as successful as I was basketball wise in my own person and kind of growing as a person. Um, it was all because of them. So definitely. That's a winner's mindset mm -hmm. of, um, for sure. Can you share a particular memory game or moment from your college career? that stands out to you. Yeah, so we had, we were playing Westfield State and one of my closest teammates, her name's Destiny, she's about 6'2", she's amazing. Wow. And we were going on this run, we were scoring and you know, Westfield is our rival within our conference. And I was coming down after breaking the press, caught the ball, dribbling towards the hoop and it was a two on one. I was gonna go past the ball, but I kind of lost like my handle on it and it ended up being a behind the back bounce pass to Destiny for an and one. And I completely thought I like messed up the whole entire play. And then when I saw she actually caught it and made the basket, it was great. And then just the entire bench standing up just for that one pass was incredible. Our bench was definitely the highlight of my entire career because yeah. my even in my freshman year, we were, I don't, I don't even remember who we were playing, but on the film, you can see the whole bench, like, sit on the ground and go into, like, a robo. Like, we did, like, <laughs> um, field goals. And, like, we all we were turned just up. ridiculous. Yeah. We were ridiculous, but we didn't care. Like, we were all ridiculous together, so. That sounds amazing. Great team um, camaraderie, yeah. for sure. Uh, um, how did you balance academics and athletics throughout your college journey? It was definitely hard because like I said before, like I was there to get my education. So it was kind of finding that balance between school, basketball, and then just like self-care. 
because if I was just go, like, if it was go, go, go the whole time and there was a lot of stress with like papers and everything, like we, it would get a lot. So it was kind of finding that balance. My coach was really good about making sure that we all had like study halls and she kept checking our grades and everything. And if our grades slipped, like she always had us come in, we had to take like an extra study hall. So she was very education first as well, which sure. I think really helped. Uh, who are, were some of the most influential coaches or mentors you had along your journey? Yeah, I think definitely Roland Million, who played at Bridgewater State as well. Um, when I first got into AAU, I played with the Ducks, um, and he was my coach along with um, Stace. Um, but Roland really kind of molded me into the player that I am today. Um, he would all, we would always do one-on-one -on -one training. Like every week, we would go to Milton Academy. It would just be me and him, and he would really like push me to that next level, which also kind of propelled me to go to Bridgewater State and it kind of like live through his legacy, like knowing how successful he was. And I actually played for one of his teammates. He was the assistant coach, Matt McLaughlin. Um, he's the head men's coach now, but I really think he, if it wasn't for Roland, I wouldn't be playing or I wouldn't have played. I probably would have quit in like middle school. Yep. What was your why? Why did you play basketball? Um, so I was a really tall kid. <laughs> I was like a lot taller than everyone else. Um, so being in basketball, it was like I was super successful from a young age. And I think I stayed with that success. But then once everyone kind of caught up height wise, I kind of had to really work on my skill set and not even just like I was never the most skilled person, but my mindset and my IQ was what propelled me to that next level, um, which I think Roland saw and he knew that like when I was on the floor, I wasn't thinking from like a player's mindset. I was thinking from a coach's mindset, even when I was at like 14 years old, wow. I was always like one step ahead of the play and kind of telling everyone where they needed to be. So I think my why is knowing I'm not the most talented person on the floor, but being like finding that confidence within myself to know that I might be the smartest person on the floor and knowing that like I can help my teammates who are better than me in some skill sets like and help them um, on the court mentally and IQ wise. Definitely. Um, so what's next for you, Maggie? Will you continue to be involved in the game of basketball, perhaps coaching or mentoring? What's next for you? along your journey yeah I definitely there's no way that I'll be able to leave the game ever like it's just a part of me now it's just my it was my entire life for 18 to 21 plus years like I can't imagine my life without being in it at some point so I definitely want to become a coach at some point um whenever it kind of falls within my uh within my future it's kind of up to whatever beings that there are but definitely I still want to stay within the sport Definitely. And the last but not least, what advice would you give to young players um, watching this or listening to this um, on how to become a champion in basketball or in life? I think just in anything that you do, success isn't linear. So you're going to have some really great days and then you're going to have some not so great days and you're going to feel really down, really unmotivated. But it's those successes that you have to think about in those low times that pushes you through the hard times and um, to get to that next level. All right, thank you.